But something I did know about early on was adaptive optics. I remember learning about it when I, I think when I was writing my first book or when I was uh, very uh, long time and I, it was an idea and I was sure it wouldn't work. I mean, it sounded great. It sounded great, but I thought it's not really, it looks really neat. And, and uh, behind you are laser beams coming from, from the uh, observatory, which is of course the image that is related to adaptive optics. And we'll talk about that. And I remember I had a beautiful, uh, uh, slide I used in my public presentations of a laser going up. I think it was from Lick, but anyway, mm -hmm. in, in, in the Lick Observatory, and um, and I thought it sounds great, but how can they really do that? Is it really going to work? So, adaptive optics has been very good to you. So let's, and, and you've been very good <laughs> to it. So let's 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 walk through adaptive optics because I think that's really important. Sure, and adaptive optics, as as you alluded to, has been. Um, People have been aware of this um, technology for a long time, but it took a, quite a while before it became um, scientifically productive. Um, so, in fact, I think I, I started to, um, at the beginning of grad school, I was hearing about adaptive optics. Um, but that was a critical moment because the adaptive optic system, the idea is that you correct for the distorting effects of the Earth's atmosphere in real time with hard hardware. So you want to introduce an, an optical element into your instrument that can adapt to the the, the turbulence and the what, how the, the light gets affected. Let, so, let's just stop for one second, and you know, just assuming people, this is new to many people. Let, let, the big problem with resolution and observing the sky is the atmosphere between us and the sky. So may, yeah, and, absolutely, and, the, and the, the atmosphere is the huge problem, the huge headache for. Um, imaging um, anything in the universe. So, you know, like what I like to say, it's great for us. It allows us to survive here on Earth, but it is a real headache um, uh, for doing astrophysics. Um, and so you can think of it, the, the analogy I like to make is you can think of the atmosphere like um, a river, like a stream. And if you're trying to look at um, a pebble at the bottom of the stream, it looks distorted because of that moving water. So the atmosphere is doing something very similar to our um, ability to detect astrophysical sources. So the next analogy I like to make in terms of trying to understand um, um, what, the adapt what, what the atmosphere is doing and how the adaptive optic system is correcting for it. If you think about a circus funhouse mirror um, where your image looks distorted um, when you look in this curved uh, mirror, that's the, what the atmosphere is doing. It's, it's taking a, um, an, an image that looks normal and then making, distorting it. And the goal of the adaptive optic system is to introduce another mirror that has the exact opposite shape to what the atmosphere has, has done to you so that you look flat again. So we, we would say that's conjugate to um, the atmosphere. So the key elements in the adaptive optic system is called a deformable mirror because it's a mirror that can deform. So it's got little elements that can move up and down very quickly. So that's, um, that's key. And then some feedback loop that tells that mirror what to do. And so these lasers are key, are, are key to that knowledge because you have to look at something bright near your source that tells you what the atmosphere is doing so that you can make those corrections to your little deformable mirror on very, very, very short time scales. We typically run the system at about um, a thousand hertz, which means that you're, um, you're making measurements of what the atmosphere is doing at a thousand times a second. Um, so you that, that's also very demanding from a computational point of view. One thing I want to just step back again, so just so people understand, they may say, well, why the lasers? But the idea is that if you want to know what the atmosphere is doing, you, you want to know what it's done to a signal that goes through it. So if you start out with a laser whose shape and, and characteristics you know, that then um, goes, and what, what lasers do, and it's kind of neat, if you've never done it with a powerful laser, I've done it with a powerful green laser, it, you can actually excite elements in the in the air so you can see the laser beam and you can and so you can see what the laser is doing through the atmosphere and that okay, tells so this you what the picture atmosphere. is very yeah this picture is actually quite deceptive because yeah. all the action is actually happening at the end point exactly the there's little scattering that happens that lights up the beam but that's it's photogenic yeah but it's not actually the important piece so these lasers are tuned to a transition Mm -hmm. electronic transition in the sodium atoms. 
Mm-hmm. And it happens, just a fluke of nature. There are two flukes of nature. One, we have um, uh, meteors that can come down. And as the, these meteors come through the atmosphere, they um, break up and um, deposit sodium atoms. And those sodium atoms get trapped in a la- very thin layer that's very high in the atmosphere. So up at 90 kilometers, there's a four-kilometer layer of sodium atoms. So what these lasers are doing are... Um, they're stimulating sodium atoms to um, shine. You create fake, effect, effectively, you're creating a fake star. That's the point. They excite that in the atmosphere. Yeah. And the, but the, and this characteristics of that star, you know, because you have the, how you're exciting it. So, you know, in some sense, that's, anyway, sorry, you, I'll let you finish, but. Absolutely. Um, so, in fact, we call it um, an artificial star. So, it's a laser guide. We call them laser guide stars. They're artificial stars. And the light from that um, source can help us or allows us to um, uh, correct for, uh, or t- to know what, what the atmosphere is doing. So, it's a really important part of this. You have a stable source. And if the, uh, if the artificial star is flickering, you know it's due to the atmosphere, basically. I mean, the laser's stable, and you know that. And so by looking at the characteristics of that star, you now know what's happened to the laser beam as it's gone through the atmosphere, and then you can work backwards and uh, and deconvolve it. To, uh, anyway, I just wanted to make that clear for people, because it still amazes me. And then the idea you do it a thousand times a second, I don't know, it just blew me away. So- 